Holiday Lights at Com is back with 3 million lights, new colorful displays, and many of your old favorites. See our salute to active duty military and veterans. For about the price of a movie ticket, you, your family, and friends can enjoy this 3 million light extravaganza with unlimited free carousel and train rides on board the Candy Can Express. And every dollar you spend at Com stays at Com. Holiday Lights at Com is on Alfred Hale Highway in Northeast Bakersfield between Lake Megan Hart Park. Just look for the lights in the sky. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Southern California Edison, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and Bakersfield City School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. And I'm Chuck. Our phone tuners are here until 5.30 waiting for your calls. You can call us here in Bakersfield at 636-4357. Outlying areas, you can call toll-free at 1-866-636-6284. You can email us questions at dothemath at kern.org. You can watch the show live online at dothemath at kern.org. And you can look for us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All sorts of things going yes. on, and a lot of things going on this afternoon, as a matter of fact. First of all, we will be out at Calm today, so we have uh, our camera crew out there at Calm. We've got Marty out there, and the holiday lights are going on at Calm. Yes. But before it gets dark, there's a lot of stuff going on out at Calm, and that's what we're going to find out as far as what's going on at the zoo and uh, perhaps see what kind of creatures they bring out this <laughs> afternoon. But anyway, as far as the kids are concerned, all you have to do is call in to do the math between now and 5 o'clock. While we're live on air, you do your problem on TV, you will receive two tickets to Holiday Lights at Com and see all of those millions of lights. And a uh, couple of changes every year. Something new and exciting every year. I think they have the uh, military salute out there oh, something a little okay. different and then april was saying there's music there was music something yeah. else going on things like that we do have phone tutors available until 5 30 but if you'd like to get, win those tickets remember that call needs to come in before so we can get you on by five o'clock and i do believe this is our 14th season i know that yep. but i believe history history will be made today our youngest student ever will be on live today. Is that right? That so right. we uh, you know, <laughs> usually have kids that are like junior high. Uh, Six, seven, you know, eight, right. You know, middle school, things like that. But our uh, youngest guest will be on today, and that's uh, Jack from Stockdale Elementary. So he'll be on a little bit later on. There he is right there, looking good, ready to go. Anyway, before we get to Jack and our first phone call of the afternoon, let's first take a look at today's Math in the News. <laughs> Now, I know Mary Lou's not here, but we're going to talk about food. Good. We get today, back anyway. to food and do the. And Are you a donut lover? Yes. Yes. Do you have a favorite type of donut? Yeah, it drives my wife nuts. Uh, plain cake donut is actually my favorite. I'm donut. a fan of that also. Yeah. You know, and there's not too many times you can get just a plain <laughs> cake donut <laughs> right. because they've always got something it's on them. Got, that's right. Um, but yeah, I mean, there aren't too many people that. Don't like donuts, I think. That's right. You know, I mean, it's just one of those feel-good comfort foods. But glazed donut, I, I could do for a glazed donut, yes. Uh, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> I would probably rather have, because I'm not a big fan of frosting. Oh, okay. On cakes and things like that and cookies and uh, anyway. So I saw this article. There was an article out today, and it was talking about uh, a brand of donut. I guess we'll go ahead and just throw it out there. Krispy Kreme. They're back. Right, they're back. Um, but they have a coupon. Oh. 
where on the 12th of this month, today's the 9th, okay. so on December 12th, if you buy a dozen, you get a dozen. Wow. So on 12, 12, you buy 12, you get 12. All right. Okay. And what they had was this on the coupon. So when you look at that, obviously the donuts are getting glazed, but what else does it make <laughs> you think of? You said it as soon as you came in and saw this. It's a barcode. It's a barcode. That's right. Which is exactly why they put the black behind it to make it look. Barcode of glaze. Like a barcode. Mm -hmm. And there are different ways that they set up the barcode so that every digit, zero through nine, is a certain measurement. Right. And you can't duplicate any of them, even if it's upside down. Mm -hmm. So I found that interesting, but I wanted to take a little bit. So is that an official barcode? That is, is not, it, you know what, that's a good question. I, I, I don't, you know what, I'm barcode? sure they could probably find something in the barcode and make that the barcode. Yeah. Um, but anyway, UPC, Universal Product Code. Right. Another name for barcode. The manufacturer identification number is the first six digits of the UPC number. So let's go ahead and take a look at a barcode right here. So here's a typical barcode. All right. So there are 12 numbers here. Right. Okay. So we've got a, a group of five here, five here, one on the end and one on the beginning. All right. So the number here, 639382, the first six. Okay, that's the manufacturer identification number. The next five, the three zeros and the three nine, are the item number. A person employed, called the UPC coordinator, is responsible for assigning item numbers to the products, making sure the same code is not used on more than one product, retiring <laughs> codes as products are removed and things like that. So there is somebody and there's a lot of people doing this. Yes. Well, you're just making sure that these barcodes are up to date and nothing is assigned to more than one item. Now, right, because that, that takes care of everything when it's coming through and being scanned. Right, scanned. It's, it's got, computers got to know what those Now, numbers. every size package and every repackaging of the item needs a different item code. A 12 ounce can of soda needs a different item number than a 16 ounce of soda. Mm -hmm. The six pack of 12 ounce cans and a 12 pack and a 24, all of those, the UPC person needs to take care of. Right. So you might be like, oh, well, that is my soda, and I know that. Well, if it comes in a 12 ounce or a 16 ounce or a certain package, those all need to be taken care of by the UPC person. But I figure let's take a look at some of the math that you can find in this. Okay. All right. So add together the value of all the digits in the odd positions. So position 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. So here's position 1, the 6. Position 3, the 9. All right, so we all go right. along with that. So we get the 6, 9, 8, 0, 0, 9, and we get 32. Right. All right. So every other number. Right. Multiply that by 3. Okay, so we have our 32. Multiply it by 3. We get 96. Add the value of all the digits in the even positions. So we add all those up, we get 11. Now we add those together, we get 96 plus 11 is 107. Take the number in step four, 107. Now this is the check digit to make sure everything's on track. Determine the number that when added to the number in step four, which is 107, is a multiple of 10. So in order to get 107 to a multiple of 10, you have to add 3, which is what's at the end. Wow. And just, I found that fascinating that there's more to these things. So these five steps are actually what they do with their barcodes. I mean, this isn't just something you made right. up to right. do, some, do some math. This is what they do. This with is right. Barcodes. This is wow. what happens all the time. And That's you can amazing. see the different sizes of these bars. And we can go into that sometime. But... I just figured that was pretty cool, yep. using that barcode as the background for their coupon. And then we'll learn a little bit about barcodes right there. So that is today's Math in the News. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Don't forget, every time you phone in to do the math, well, today only, yep. you will win yourself a couple of tickets to Holiday Lights at Com. Right now, we'll go to a student from Thompson. Sammy, how are you? Good. And are you in 7th or 8th grade? Uh, I'm seven. All right. Sammy, as soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Okay. Is that my name on TV? That it is. Is that how you spell it? Yeah. All right. Good. Glad we got the right Sammy. Good.
So Thank tell, you. Me, tell me the tell me what the problem is. Okay. Well, I'm just having trouble on expressing the, the relationship in the form of an equation. Okay. Yeah. So um, what's the relationship? The relationship is three. So you must have some sort of a table that you're looking at. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and give us a couple of the numbers on that table, and it might make things a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. Well, the, it says time, and then on the bottom it says number of tests. So time on top, and on the bottom you said t number of tests? Texts. Text. Number of texts. Yeah. Okay. And then it says number of texts right under. Okay. So you, you, it's just a, a chart with some numbers, right? Yeah, and on time it says one. Okay. So the, for the first one, for the time is one. And below that is? Three. So time one, number of text three, right? So what's the next yes. one? The next one is the time is two. And the number of texts? Six. Six, okay. And let's just keep going. Top number? Three. And the bottom number? Nine. Okay. More? Is there more? Oh, yeah, sorry. And then the last one's four. Four and? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. So read the directions. What exactly do you need to do with these numbers? Well, I, I actually, I found out what I needed to do. I, okay. I found that the proportional relationship is three. So the relationship, 1 over 3, 2 over 6, 3 over 9, 4 over 12, so you set up proportions, right? Mm hmm So, okay, so let me know, what are, what are the directions in this problem? So you've got to, you just need to finish the problem, is that right? So go ahead and read yes, the directions. I just don't know how to put it in a, a form, like, of, a, of an equation. Okay, so read me the directions and then we can finish the problem, okay? Okay, so um, I got, I, I got most of it, I just need help, so... So what do you want me to tell you? Read the directions for the problem. Okay, so it says express the relationship in the form of an equation. That's it? Yes. Okay, so I we have to, to so do you do you have to assign a variable if you're gonna use an equation? Do you have to put a variable for each of these or what? A variable? A variable I, if you're gonna write an equation, right? You're going to write an yeah. equation like, you know, y equals 3x plus 2. Is it something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. So do, do we want to use a variable for these? We're going to take, we're going to figure out the number of texts based on the number of time, right? Yeah, but um, then and it says a k, which is constant. k is the constant, okay. So that's going to be the number that you multiply by. So mm -hmm. you said that all of these are the same ratio is that a proportion, right? One over three, two over six, three over nine, you, you did that? Yes. So the question is, what's the equation gonna look like? Are uh, you gonna have something like y equals kx? A, and, oh, and sorry, you yeah, said, y equals something and then it says x. Right, so you said you have a constant k, so are, is your equation gonna look like y equals kx, something like that? Yeah. Right. So we just mm -hmm. have to decide which one's y and which one's k? y would be number of texts, right? So I want to figure out the number of texts, so let's call that y, right? Mm -hmm. And that's going to depend on the time, right? So we'll call that x. Yeah. And so we have to figure out what do you have to do to x to get y? What do you have to multiply x by to get y, correct? Uh, what do you have to multiply this number to get that number? What do you have to multiply this to get that? And you said 1 over 3 equals 2 over 6 equals 3. Is this what you set up, right, this proportion? Oh, actually, I, we're dividing, so I switched it. So okay. I put it, they're all improper. You put 3 over 1, 6 over 2, 9 over 3. I wish I could just flip them over, right? But that'll work, yeah. won't it? Yeah, so I, I, put, I, I switched them all over. Is that okay. correct, or did yeah. I mess that up? So you have 3 over 1, 6 over 2, 9 over 3, 12 over 4. 
So you're asking, what do you have to multiply this by to get that? So what was that? You said k. What was that constant? What do all of three? these reduce to? Yeah, they're all three, aren't they? Yeah. So it looks like if you let x stand for the time and you let y stand for the number of texts, then the number of texts, y, equals, what did we say k was? A constant, which is three. Three times the time, right? So if yeah, so t is one. Y would be, would, y would be, so your equation is going to be y equals 3x, where y equals the number of texts. Now, you can write that. I just labeled the chart, but you could write that out. If you need to write it out as a sentence, y represents the number of texts, x mm -hmm. represents the time, and k, the constant, is 3, isn't it? And this should yeah. be your equation that so, you're going to end up with. So will we leave it like that, or will we actually put something for y? No, that would, I, I believe you said you needed to write it as an equation. Mm -hmm. And so your equation is y equals 3x. Yes. That's the relationship between the top numbers and the bottom numbers, isn't it? Oh, that's it? And you should be done. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's Thanks it. For the call. Nicely done, Sammy. <laughs> do remember, if you have some more problems like that, we do have phone tutors available until 530. Right now, we're going to head out to Calm. We'll see what's going on out there before the uh, sun sets. We've got Marty out there with one of my favorite <laughs> friends. Lana, is that, a, uh, is that a, a great horned owl you have? It is a great horned owl named Draco. Draco. Has Draco been in the studio before or is that a different owl? No, I believe Draco has been because he's my favorite bird. That's oh, why. Well, good. <laughs> Let's find yeah. out what's going on with you guys. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm Marty. I'm out here at Calm here <laughs> with uh, Lana <laughs> and Draco. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about Calm and everything you can see here if you come out to see the Calm Light. So when is it open? When can we come see the light? Well, we are open t tonight. Through, All right. uh, we started November 22nd, okay. but we're open through January 2nd. Okay. Through January 2nd. So we oh, spent wow. three plenty months. of time. We spent three months. Uh, we're only closed Christmas, okay. so we have plenty of time. We open up from 5.30 to 9 each night. Okay. Uh, bundle up, dress up warmly, and come on out and see the lights because it does benefit the California Living Museum. Wonderful. So talk to us a little bit about the benefits. Most of the proceeds go to uh, the animals directly, or is there some other um, idea or focus you've got for the benefit proceeds? Uh, well, every every time you purchase a ticket for mm -hmm. Holiday Lights, you don't only get to see three million mm -hmm. lights and more than seventy five displays uh -huh. and Draco and Draco he's on be exhibit. Here? You can all see right. him when you come out to visit the lights. Fabulous! But all of the proceeds benefit uh, building new exhibits at Calm. A few years back, we built the two million dollar award winning Cats of California exhibit, yeah, that one's beautiful. which houses our mountain lion and our bobcats. That came. All directly mm -hmm. from um, mm -hmm. holiday lights from tickets. From holiday lights yes. ticket. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the money stays here. It doesn't go anyplace else except for calm. Do we have any new ideas of new animals that we can expect to see in the near future? Yes. Actually, mm -hmm. we just got some in, and they are mm -hmm. on exhibit right now. There are fishers. Fishers? Yes. What's and a fisher? Fisher, um, everyone knows what a wolverine is. Yeah, wolverine like is. a wolf? Yes. The, no, no. Oh, wolverines no. are not wolves. Oh, no, no I don't. They're, they're, in, they're like, <laughs> a wolverine is... Mm -hmm. is somewhat like a badger okay but a little different oh yes yes they're kind of brown and yes. black uh -huh. um, fishers are the next size down okay uh in the weasel family mm -hmm. so um they kind of have a like a color coding like a mink okay but they're bigger okay and Beautiful. we have a male and a female out here and they're in the mammal round so you can visit them when you're here too wonderful mm -hmm. what other exhibits are open during calm for the animals what other that animals? you can see during holiday during lights holiday now it lights. is a holiday lights visit it's mm -hmm. not a total zoo visit right so you do get to see the reptile house is open oh great uh the skunks if they're awake you can see them in there Fabulous. um the cats and the bobcats the mountain lion and the bobcats they sometimes come down sometimes don't mm -hmm. and um you can see um the uh, raccoons as well. Oh, great! So, and definitely but, Draco. Yeah, He'll but when you here. when you leave, you will get a flyer, and that flyer has two passes to come back to see Calm anytime before uh, February twenty eighth, oh, and you wow. can see them during zoo hours. Okay, mm -hmm. where they'll be awake. And yes, from nine to four. Uh -huh. Awesome. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the math you deal with. Like, how sure. much like does groceries cost to feed these wonderful animals? Like, is it you know, and maybe bi weekly. How much is that? Sure, about every week we spot, probably spend at least 250 to $300, not only at the grocery store, mm -hmm. but we also have a feed store that we purchase from. We purchase from PetSmart, 
So there's a lot of money in that. But where the math really is involved uh -huh. here is when our keepers do all the math to know exactly how much for injections, um, how much to dose animals with. Oh, for vet bills for, and stuff. For, for, all, for all the, well, we dose our animals Oh, you do it all too. yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So okay. our keepers all have to know how to do the math right. uh, for that for that right there. So there is a lot of math involved. It's not just coming out and visiting animals and, and all that. There's the animals the, and the, that math mm -hmm. is always there mm -hmm. for just about everything you do, really. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, wonderful. Okay. Well, talk to us a little bit about Draco here. Yes. He is the coolest owl. Tell me a little bit about him. <laughs> Draco's about uh, 14 years old now, and he came through us when he was a baby through the... <laughs> There we go. There we he go. came to us through the wildlife, our wildlife rehabilitation program. Okay. Um, he was raised, and um, unfortunately, he imprinted. And imprinting means they bond too much with humans, so you can't release them when that happens. Our whole oh. goal is to release, but oh, when that nice. happens, either you keep them and, and use them um, for an ambassador bird, uh -huh. or you find another facility. Mm -hmm. Because for him to be out in the wild and to be as bonded and as closely as it's to humans yeah. uh, would not be a good thing for right. anyone. Yeah. So, Right. Great horned owls are really interesting birds. Uh, they're pretty fearless. Really? Um, they're uh, nicknamed tigers of the sky. Really? So they will oh. take on uh, birds much larger larger than they are. Um, they will take mm. on humans as well Ooh, uh, if you're okay. too close you're to their nesting that. area. <laughs> um, so they really are um, uh, foes. But as you can see, well, you can't see it on TV, of course, right now. But the scrub jays come out because this is one of their great predators. And they'll come down and swoop down and... and try wow. to nudge him away because they know that that he's a threat to their nests as well oh so. wow so yeah they mm -hmm. came out a little bit before so i'm yeah. glad that they've left us yeah. alone for now but right he is gorgeous now right. is it a misnomer for the great horned owl he doesn't actually have no. horns even though it looks like no. it. no those are just feathered tufts. Fancy, that's all they are fancy feathers yes, yes. Well, he is gorgeous yes. all right now how many animals are there here about 250 <laughs> 250 yes. animals <laughs> and what are some of the favorites that people love to come out and see? Does anyone have any like, well, specific favorites? Well, a or? lot of the favorite is our Bam Bam and, and Pebbles, our porcupine up front. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so a lot of people are really attached to them. Okay. But then, of course, the mountain lion, the bears are always uh, everyone's favorites the as bears, well. bears, yes. So, yes, yes. the bears. Mm -hmm. well, fabulous. All right, well, thank you so much. We're going to check out those porcupines yes, a little bit later are. in the show. All right, Mike, back to you. Done. Nice to see that uh, Lana was handling the owl, Draco. Are you going to handle the porcupine? Is that what's coming up next? Am I? I don't know. <laughs> might feed one. Yay! Okay, hey, there feet. you go. I was going to say otherwise, if you just have a mouse out there, maybe you can uh, entice a Draco. To... Oh, <laughs> anyway, just wanted to see a little bit of what's going on out of calm. Thank you very much for that, ladies. We'll check back in with you in a little bit. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. And here we go. As I said, we do have our youngest guest, as far as I can remember. I haven't been here all 14 years. I don't remember a student younger no. than second grade. Why don't you introduce yourself and let us know where you go to school. I go to school at Stockdale. And what's your name? Jack. How's second grade going, Jack? Really good. Yeah? Anything too hard about it? Um, nothing. Nothing? So okay. whatever I give you, you'll have no problem doing I have no problem. You have no problem. That is exactly the attitude that I want to see right mm -hmm. there. Well, you know what? We're going to, first of all, you have your math book here with you. Mm -hmm. This is what you guys work on every day. Not and really every day. You don't do math every day? I do math every day. I oh, just okay. don't do regrouping every day. Oh, all right. That's fine. So you do math every day. Yeah. All right. You almost, you got, you almost throw me into yeah. a little thing. Like, <laughs> oh, you don't do math every day. What's going on there? But you don't do regrouping every day. Now, how long have you been regrouping in class? Um... Uh, just started it or? No, about like in the middle of the year. So in the middle of the year? Mm -hmm. Kind of like where we're at now? Yeah. All right. Why don't you head on over to the board, Chuck, and we're going to do one of these regrouping. And then I'd like you to explain it the way you understand how to do it. Mm -hmm. All right? So let's go ahead and write down this number. Maybe we'll, uh, 902. Okay. Yeah, so just the tip of the pen. There you go. 902. Minus 783. 783. There you go. Just turn it. Yeah, you turn And getting proficient with the smart board the first time out. So there you go. All right. So Jack, do me a favor. You can rewrite it if you'd like to. 
but explain how you solve this type of problem. Um, I solve it by adding the three, the, all the numbers, but the subtraction I take away from the other number. All right, so go ahead and start doing it for us. Oh, so you're going to do it this way, huh? Okay. Interesting. 201. 201? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. We're doing regrouping, right? Mm -hmm. So somewhere so in this problem, I'm they're, they're going to ask you to regroup. So let's, mm -hmm. let's see if we can do this problem by regrouping, by writing it up and down like the way that's in your book, mm -hmm. and then see what the regrouping is going to be. Here, let's make that a little bit bigger. Now go ahead. Because I see what he's there. doing there. Mm -hmm. So let's go put the 902 up there again, OK? Let's get that. Yeah. Okay, put the 902 up there again. And then below it, 783. 783. So below, seven, eight, no, no, we don't need the line. Oh. We, we don't need the line. We'll put that at the, at the end, right? Mm -hmm. And then 783 below that. And now draw your line. And let's, no, down here. He wants to get into fractions already yeah, with really big looks numbers. Like it. <laughs> Indeed, it does. Okay. They'll fix it. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 there you go. Let's make that a little smaller again. Now. There you go. 783. Yeah, draw your line down below. And now let's do this subtraction, okay? Yeah. So well, let's what make we're that do, 902 at the top. 902. And let's make this 783 over here, okay? I got red, you've got black. Mm -hmm. All right, so now what we have to do is we're going to subtract, right? Uh -huh. So we're going to take 2 minus 3. But you can't do that, can uh -huh. you? 3 is too big. So here's where the regrouping comes in. Mm -hmm. How are you going to regroup to make this number big enough so you can subtract? I'm going to make it add it with the 8 to make it... Well, we've got to work with the 902. The 8's yeah. down here with the 3. So what are we going to work... What are we going to do with that 902? We're going to take... We're going to cross out the 2 and... And the, what are we going to make that 2? We're going to make it a 10 by taking... So the, we're going to take a 10. Where are we going to take that 10 from? We can't take from the 0, can we? Yeah, so we're going to take um, 9... Nine to here, but then take a one over here. Okay, so let's oh. let's take let's regroup. Let's take a let's take a one from that nine, and let's let's do the regrouping, right? So cross yes. out that nine. Well, let's let's leave it. And cross, but cross it out. Yeah, don't erase it. So what's when you regroup? When you take from that nine, what's going to be left? It's going to be one. Well, we're going to take a one. Eight. So let's put the eight above that. Can you reach that above there and put the eight? And where's that one going to go when we group that, right? We're going to make it over here to a Except we got that zero yeah, in the way, so don't we? Yeah. So we got to take that, that one, that 10, regrouping, and we got to put it over here, don't we? Mm hmm So let's make this a 10, isn't it? Mm hmm So that's going to be a 10. Now, we still haven't got to the 2 yet, have we? Mm -mm. So now let's take from that 10. Take 8. No, we got the 8 already. Now we're at the 10. So let's cross out the 10. You got that? Okay. Cross out the 10. And when you take a 1 away from there, what's left on the 10? 9? Nine? 9. So let's put a 9 up above there. And now we've taken from there. Now we've got to the 2. Uh -huh. So instead of a 2, we're going to put a 1 in front of that 2. Uh -huh. What's that going to become now? Um, 12. A 12. So we regrouped and we took a uh, group of 10 from here to put it in here. So then this is going to be 9. And then we took a group of 10 and put it over here and made that a 12. So mm -hmm. we made it bigger by regrouping these groups mm -hmm. of 10s, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we made that big enough. Is this big enough? Is 9 big enough so we can subtract 8? Yes. It is. So what do you get? 1. And can we borrow, can we subtract from the last one? Yes. Okay, so it looks like once we've gone all the way over and regrouped and made that 12, we got 119 for our answer. Looks like we got the answer this one. All right, nicely done with 119 right there. Okay. So what we're going to do is a little bit later on, we're going to try to find a problem where he was doing his other thing right there uh -huh. and see if we can 
figure out what he was doing if they well, did Well, maybe less. the review problem, I think. Maybe without the regrouping, we can Right, do I think that. that's what it is. Right. So anyway, okay. we'll uh, be back. We'll go out to Cobb once again in a little bit, but we'll do all that right after this. Well, today we're in Maricopa. We're at Maricopa Middle School, home of the Indians, and today we're here to... Well, this afternoon we're in Maricopa, we're at Maricopa Middle School, and with us right now is 7th grade student Anya. Anya, how are you today? Good. All right, Anya, I've got a perfect problem just for you. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a little probability. You ready? Okay. okay. I've got some information written up here already, but I'm going to read the problem to you, and then I'd like you to go ahead and tell me how you'd like to solve it. All right. Okay. A bag contains three red marbles, four white marbles, and five blue marbles. One marble is randomly selected from the bag. What is the probability that the marble is not red? Mm. And I want you to write that down as a proper fraction. Okay. It would be 3 out of 12. Well, how did you get 3 out of 12? What were you thinking of and what are you doing right there? Well, for if you add all of the marbles at first, It'll be 3 plus 4, which would be 7, and, well, yeah, 5 plus 7 equals 12. Perfect. So we know the total probability is 12, right? That's the total possible outcomes is going to be what we're looking for. Okay? Yes. So we know there are 12 marbles in this bag. Mm -hmm. So I want to read the question to you once again. What is the probability that the marble is not red? Mm. So how many are not red? Nine, so it'll probably be nine out of twelve. Nine out of twelve. Okay, so you want to fix that one up there? Okay. All right. Now, the reason I let you go when you put three out of twelve is because on a lot of tests, three out of twelve will be an answer, right? Because they'll go, oh, how many are red? And they see three, and they know it's twelve, so they put three out of twelve. Yeah. But the question was kind of a little tricky one, right? It was like, how many are not red? Yeah. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take that 9 over 12, and I'd like you to simplify it. Okay. So you know how to simplify a fraction? Yeah. All right. Well, if I simplify it, first it, you would divide it. You first see what the um, connection would be in that both has, con the both connection would be 3. So... 3 divided by 9 equals 3. Mm -hmm. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. So it would be 3 over 4. Perfect. Nicely done right there. Because what you did is you saw that the greatest common factor of 9 and 12 was 3. So you divided both of them by 3. You came out with 3 fourths. So Anya, perfect. Nice job. with me right now with Savannah, an eighth grade student. Are you ready? Yes. Now, it's probably been a long time since you've heard uh, stories and fairy tales in class. I know in kindergarten, first grade, they do that a lot, all right? Do you remember the one about Goldilocks? Yes. All right. One of my favorites. One of your favorites. Good. All right. So, there was a pie, okay? Papa ate a quarter of the pie, all right? Mama ate a third of what was left. Baby ate half of what was left after all of that. How much pie was left for Goldilocks? That's what we want to find out. All right. So how would you go about starting this problem and what's your approach to it? Um, I'd draw a picture. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a favorite type of pie before we go? Probably meringue. Meringue? Yes. All right. Um, I'd make it quarters. Why quarters? Because a one-fourth is a quarter, so. Okay, and that's the easiest place to start. Because oh, yeah. sometimes people will go, well, I don't know how many pieces to cut it into. Do I just cut it into two, eight, how many pieces? 
So for the younger students watching, you're starting by cutting it into fourths, yes. which is where we're starting with Baba. All right, so go ahead. How are we going to figure this out? Um, and then this part's gone, and this is about what's left. And Mama took one third of what's left, so I'm going to take one piece and take about a third, which is right about there. Okay, so it would be one third. What you're doing is you're taking one third of a quarter. Yes. Right? But she ate a third of everything that's left. Oh. See? Make sense ah, now? Yes. So there's different ways to look at it, but what we want to do is we want to say that Mama ate one third of everything that's left. Oh. How much is left right now? How much is left after Papa ate that? Uh, third or <laughs> three quarters of the right. pie. Right. There's three quarters left, right? We have one, two, three quarters left. She ate one third. So how many is she going to eat? One quarter. Right. Because this is one third of what was left. All right? Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. And then the baby ate half of what's left. So this is about half, and I'm going to take half of that away, which is a quarter. OK. So the question now comes up, how much pie was left for Goldilocks? Oh, then it's one fourth of a pie. So how are we going to write that? So one fourth of the pie was left for Goldilocks. And the reason I wanted you to go through that is because sometimes students will take a look at this and they'll try to add all of these up, right? Yeah. And then, you know what? Let's take a quick minute and see what this what would happen. All right. We have one fourth plus one third plus one half. Before we can add all of these fractions, what do we have to do first? Uh, find the common denominator. Common denominator. Four, three, and twelve. What's going to be common with them? Um. Probably 12. 12. All right. Go ahead and convert those. Make them equivalent now. All right. Now we can add them all up. Yeah. What would you get? And that's a. <laughs> There's improper. no way that's going to work, right? Oh, uh, yeah. That's an improper fraction. There can't be 13 twelfths of the pie left. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> that's more than the whole pie in itself, right? So that's why I wanted you to go through it, because sometimes just drawing something, some sort of a diagram or a chart, and just going through it like this makes the whole problem a little bit easier. All right? Savannah, nicely done. And welcome back. Just a reminder, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30. Jack, you're in second grade, Stockdale Elementary School. Is there anybody you would like to send out a special hello to before we keep going on? My teacher, Miss Armijo. Miss Armijo? Yeah. How's she doing so far this year? Very good. Very good. Learning a lot of stuff? Mm-hmm. What do you think is probably, like, the funnest thing you've learned so far this year? Um... Multiplication and division. Multiplication and division? Good. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have you multiply in a couple minutes, but first mm -hmm. what we're going to do is another regrouping problem with okay. you, all right? So head back over to the board. So the first number is 794. So 794 minus... 268. That way we don't have to worry about the zero, but you'll still have to regroup a little bit. Okay, so where are we going to start? We're going to start in the far right, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you have to do? Can you take eight away from four? Yes, you can. Well, no, you can. No, you can't. So how do you guys, how do you show regrouping in, when you do these problems in class? I would take this nine and okay. make it into a ten so I can take... So Except you're, you're regrouping, so we're going to regroup this. But, so that 9 is not going to become a 10. What, what's it going to become? What are you going to put up above it? I'm going to... What are you going to put up above when you regroup that 9? I'm going to um, put 
I'm gonna put um six maybe. Well, we're gonna what are you gonna take away from that nine? What are you gonna what do you, what do we have to put I'm over gonna, here? I'm gonna take away six from the nine. But what are we gonna put over here? We're gonna take a ten, aren't we? We're gonna yeah. take ten of those to make that a, a fourteen. So mm -hmm. if we're gonna take ten, aren't we gonna take mm -hmm. one group of ten away from that nine? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and above that, if we take one group of 10 away from that, that nine, what's, how many groups are left? There are... You have nine groups and you take away one group, what do you have left? You have... Uh, wait, 10 groups? No, you, you have nine, but you're going to take away a group. Um, it would equal eight? Yeah, so I'm gonna put a, you're going to put an eight above there, aren't you? Wait. <laughs> you reach up there? Yeah. There you go. So put an eight right up there. There you go. Okay, and we took that one group and we're going to put it in with the four, right? So now instead of a four, what's it going to be? It's going to be a twelve. Oh, where'd you get that? We From, we we took wait, we, we no, it's going to be a five. We took one group of ten, didn't we? When yeah. you take ten and add fourteen, you're going to have fourteen. So just put a one in front of that four, and there's your group. So that group that we took was that one group of ten, and we're going to put it on the four. So mm -hmm. now what's fourteen minus eight? 14 minus 8 is 4. Wait, no. 6. 6. Okay, so 6 down there. Now, do we have to do regrouping to go 8 minus 6? Um, no. Okay, so put the 6 down there. Now, do your next subtraction. Okay, there you go. And the last one? It is, um, we can't take away 7. Well, what's 7? Take away 2. It is 5. 5, so that's okay. As long as the... As long as that top number is bigger than the bottom number, we can do it. We couldn't, the top number was only a four, we couldn't take it away from it, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so there's your answer, 526. All right, there you go. So we've got another problem without the zero right there. 636-4357 is the phone number. We're going to head back at the comm one more time and check out with Marty and uh, see what's going on. Porcupine time? Yeah, it is. Thanks, Mike. We're here again with uh, Lana at Calm, and we've got Bam Bam and Pebbles, and they are so cute. And I'm going to go ahead and feed Bam Bam a little almond. They're loving these almonds. They are the cutest things I think I've ever seen. They're sitting there just munching on their almonds. Mm -hmm. So sweet. And you can see these guys if you come out to uh, Calm. They're right in the front. Um, they might be hiding or sleeping, but they are so cute. So tell us a little bit about these guys. Let me give them well, they are nocturnal, okay. so that makes them um, a great, although their time clock's a little set, they still come out at night. They'll climb high up into the tree. Uh, people take photos of them, um, and they're really um, some of our visitors' most favorite animals. Yes. Yeah, we had um, a young gentleman from uh, France a few months back, and um, he was very excited because they didn't have these, of course, in France. Right. And he was very excited to see porcupine. Right. So um, oh, yeah. we uh, so we don't allow most people to feed him, but we did allow him to feed him almonds and everything too. Oh, so wow. um, so they're they're amazing. really, as you see, slow moving yes. and gentle. Very gentle. And that's why they have those quills. Uh -huh. Is that is their only defense mechanism. Right. So um, you know these quills. Um, so we have one here. Yes. They, so. they don't look as ominous as they really are. At the end of that is a barb, and once okay. that goes into skin, uh, your skin and animal skin, whatever, right. it the barbs open up on the end and keep working through the body. Um, they really? have found bobcats, coyotes, and everything that have come up against these guys and have ha found uh, quills in their target organs like their kidneys, heart, liver, and all that. Oh my so we'll keep on working if you don't get them out. Oh my gosh, they'll keep going. Of they'll course. keep on going, oh, wow. yeah. Oh, they're so, so cute. I know, they're being so now, good. Now, they can't actually shoot their quills, no, right? No, That's a common no, that is a myth. huge myth yeah. because the, the quills are just modified hair. Oh, okay. So they can no more shoot the hair out of, the, the quills out of them than we can shoot hair out of our heads. Uh, so what they do is when they a predator comes up and they alarm, they'll back up into them. Oh, the quills come forward, and um, and the very interesting thing about that is once they they hit something with the quill and the quill goes into skin or uh -huh. a body, right. um, there's another quill following it right up again. So they're not defenseless because if they 
lost all their quills at one time, um, oh, they'd be right. defenseless. That's right. So, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. So, Lana, tell me a little bit about how did you get this sure. wonderful, amazing yes. job? What did you do to land uh, such a perfect job? Well, back in the 90s, I was on the board of directors out here, and this is long before Kern County Superintendent of Schools um, had taken over oh, um, wow. okay, yeah. the facility. Uh -huh. um, I've always loved animals from a child on. Uh, my major is actually communications at Cal State Bakersfield. Uh, really? with a minor in art fabulous but um, I worked at the Bakersfield SBCA for about nine years and uh, then came out here for the first holiday lights and then got got a permanent job afterwards so Wonderful. yeah it's a great job that great is job if you love just... animals so there's a multitude of things you can do you don't necessarily have to be you know a zoology major or anything to work uh, in a zoo if you want to work in a zoo there's a ton of things that zoos need people to do so, so there's job openings absolutely. Stuff that we can come and yes. check out maybe or somebody's yes. interested mm -hmm. if they wanted to just you know see how they can work with animals right. so right. That, there's yeah. many different positions right and the great thing is you you know for almost every job i've ever had i volunteered at that facility for so the power of volunteering and what that can open the doors for you in the future mm -hmm. is amazing not just for community service hours right but in the long run it right. really does help you especially if you don't have any work experience on a resume mm -hmm. A volunteer work counts a lot for and are no you, work experience. You guys need volunteers for Always this season, need volunteers. right? Absolutely. Not only the season, season, 365 oh, days a year we, we have to work with these animals and we need volunteers almost 365 days a year. It's very important to us. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, You Lana, bet. For this. Absolutely. And you guys definitely need to come out here to Calm, see the lights, see the beautiful animals, and just help um, facilitate proceeds for these animals and to bring more to this uh, facility. Help Calm. us grow. Calm mm -hmm. is fabulous and it's growing and it's just beautiful out here. I know you can see the lights behind me. They just turned them on. I hope to see you guys out here and I'm very excited. Thank you for yes, having me absolutely. out. Thank you for showing mm -hmm. me the owl mm -hmm. and the beautiful porcupines and uh, back to you Mike in the studio. All right. Thank you very much for that ladies and I uh, hope everybody's got an opportunity to head out to Calm, see the animals, all uh -huh. the great facilities they have and as they said it's expensive so if you haven't been out there lately, a lot of great things going on out there right now. 636-4357 is the phone number. We'll have Jack back at work in a couple of minutes, but right now we have a student from Berkshire. Janae, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. You're in sixth grade, is that correct? Yeah. All right. What kind of a problem are you working on? I'm working on an algebra problem. Okay. As soon as you're ready, let's hear it. What did you say? As soon as you're ready, you can go ahead and read it. So go ahead okay. and we'll do your problem in a few minutes. Okay, so is it an equation you're solving? Yes. Okay, so why don't you give me the equation? 4x minus parentheses. Parentheses, okay. 3x plus 11, another parentheses, equals negative 11. Negative 11. So let's make sure we have this right. 4x minus parentheses 3x plus 11 equals negative 11. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. So we've got an equation. You know you go through certain steps to solve an equation. What's the first thing we need to do in this problem? We need to distribute the negative between the 3x and the positive 11. Okay, because the distributive property gets rid of the parentheses, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute, because we know this negative is kind of like a negative 1, isn't it? Yes. So if we think of the distributive property as multiplying by a number, let's multiply by negative 1 each time, okay? Even though okay. we don't have a 1 there, we can think of it as being there. So we're not going to do anything with the 4x, are we? No. So what happens I mean, yeah. when we go negative four, negative one times three x? What do we get? Negative three x. Minus three x, and then negative one times plus eleven is negative eleven. Okay, and then that equals negative eleven, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, so we simplified the left side a little bit. Let's simplify it some more. Can we combine any like terms on the left side? Yes, we can. So what do we have? A 4x, we have 4x minus 3x. Which is what? Is x. Yeah, that's 1x, right? 4 minus 3 is 1, and 1x is just x, isn't it? So yeah. x minus 11 equals negative 11. Mm -hmm. Right? So we've got it down to no parentheses. We've combined all like terms, so we have a nice, simple equation to do. And our, your goal is to get x by itself, isn't it? 
So how do we get rid of that minus 11? Um, we add 11 to it. Yeah, so we're going to add 11 here. And because this is an equation, we have to keep it balanced, don't we? Yes. So if we add 11 here, what are we going to do on the other side? Yeah, add 11. Add 11 there, okay? Really important that we keep the equation balanced. When you get into a science class, it's very important that you keep chemical equations balanced. Right? Because we have minus 11 plus 11, we know they cancel out. That was the whole idea, wasn't it? Yes. The only thing left on the left side is x, and what do we have on the right side? We don't have anything. Well, they cancel out too, didn't they? Yes. But it's not just blank, is it? It cancels out to what? What is minus x, m minus 11 plus 11? Zero. It's just zero, isn't it? Zero yeah. is a perfectly good number, isn't it? Over here, yeah. we could have written this as x plus zero, couldn't we? But yeah. we know that x plus zero is just x. And so it looks like zero, x equals zero is our answer. And it's pretty easy over here to check our answer because zero is nice to work with, right? Four times yeah. zero, that's zero. And this is negative one times, well, let's see. 3 times 0 is still 0 plus 11, that's 11. So we have okay. 0 minus 1 times 11. Isn't that just negative 11? So it checks, yeah. doesn't it? And yeah. there's our answer. Okay, Thank you. thanks for the call. Right, so you got a great problem right there because I know a lot of students get, well, sometimes they go, right well, it's here. a 0. Right there. And that can't possibly be the answer. And sometimes they'll think that it's unsolvable. Right. All right, Jackie boy, over here. Okay. I've got to come up with a good problem for you. All right. Now, we've done a little regrouping. Mm -hmm. And you know, you said you know how to multiply. Mm -hmm. So let's hear some answers. Uh, two times three. Six. Good. Uh, three times three. Nine. Four times four. Sixteen. So those are some doubles. Let's try three times five. Fifteen. Okay. Um, what about five times two? Ten. Six times two. Six times two is 12. How about 23 times 14? 23 times 14, somewhere around 60. Maybe, let's find out. Why don't you head on over to the board? All right, what I'd like you to do is, Chuck is gonna work with you okay. and do 23 times 14, the way that a lot of schools teach how to multiply. Okay. And then we're gonna show you another way to do it. Okay, so if we're going to do 23 times 14, and let's put the 14 down below. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the multiplication facts that you know, right? And we're going to do this two-digit multiplication. So let's put the 14 below the... Okay, so now let's... Let's go, let's get rid of this now. Okay. And we're going to multiply 23 times 14, okay? Yeah. So... Here's what Mike was just asking you. What's 4 times 3? 4 times 3 is 12. Is 12. Now, we can't put 12 down here because we We have to move the 10 over here. Yeah, so we're going to put what down here? We're going to put 2. The 2, and you said we're going to, kind of like regrouping, we're uh -huh. going to put the 10 over here, so let's put a 1 up there, right? So now we're going to go 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, that's a nice easy multiplication, but we got to add that one, that group of 10 that we have right here. So 4 times 2 is 8 plus that one? 18. No, no, one. we're going to add just one. Uh, um, What's 8 plus 1? 9. 9, so that's going to be 9. Because we have a 10, and that 4 times 2 is actually 80, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Because that, this is a 20. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to multiply by this one, but like we said, this is a 10, isn't it? So we're going to multiply by 10. So let's put a zero right here. So we're going to multiply by 10. And now let's multiply by that one. One times three? One times three is three. That's easy, isn't it? Put that down below. The and one times two? One times two is two. So that's going to go out here at the end. And now all we have to do is combine these. So let's add those up and see what you get. Um, wait. Well, it just adds, starting here, just add straight down. 9 plus 3? 9 plus 3, 12. Well, so I just put except what goes here? 
um, a not two. The, yeah, the, the two goes there. And we got to carry that one, don't we? Mm-hmm. So carry the one. Carry the one. Over here. And now add down here. Two. One plus two? Oh, yeah. Oh. Right. Good. So, Chuck, what I'd like you to do is leave that right there, and on the side, go ahead and draw a rectangle for me. Okay, so let me, let's show you another way of doing this problem. That's the way that you're probably used to doing this problem. Let's no, do the way you will be in third grade, definitely. So. Right. And let's go ahead and put a cross in there, and let's draw some diagonals coming down. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some diagonals here, and here, and here. Now we're going to take the same problem, 23, so write that on the top of the two boxes. So here, here, I'll reach it up here. Here's the 23. And we'll put 14 down the side. And here's 14. Okay, now you just did all of those multiplications mm -hmm. here and got that answered. So let's do the multiplications over here. Mm -hmm. What's 1 times 3? 1 times 3 is 3. 3. And so we're going to put a 0 here because it's a 1 digit. Put a 0 there and a 3 there. There's your 3. Now we're going to go 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. So we're going to put a 12, 1, 2. All right? So that was the multiplication we did second here, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and multiply 1 times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 2, so we've got a 0 and a 2. 0, 2. And 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 8, so you've got a 0 and an 8. So this doesn't look much like that yet. Here you multiply, you had just added those all down. Mm -hmm. Now on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to add, you get that 8 in there. We're going to add down these diagonals, mm -hmm. okay? And so we're going to add, let's add down here. This is nice because this is just oh. a 2. So we just put 2 right here? We're going to put a 2 right here. Oh. Now we're going to add this. We've got a 3 plus a 1 plus an 8. What's 3 plus 1 plus 8? 12. 12. So put down, okay. We're going to put a 2 there. Now, where's that 1 going to go? That 1's going to go over. So we're going to put the 1 over here. So put a 1 right here. So that's like the carrying we did. Now let's add down here. Um, 1 plus 2. two. Is three, and that zero is just zero, isn't it? And so this problem, okay. notice what our answer is. Mm -hmm. Our answer is right there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Make that a three. <laughs> Write that three in there. And so you notice that our answer is right here, uh -huh. and it's the same 322 that we have here. What's this method called? That's nicely done, the lattice method. This Jack, is the come on over method. here. So you know you don't even have to worry about erasing that because I have more important duties for you, young man. Because you did such a great job today, you are now our newest ambassador. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do is you're going to get one of these Do the Math shirts and you're going to wear this every day for the rest of 2015. Okay. Are you good with that? Mm -hmm. It's only a couple weeks. Tell your mom it's all right. It'll wash up and be nice for all of January, all right? Anyway, so thank you for coming in and uh, showing us how you regroup and use some of those skills yeah, in multiplication. And do remember, we have phone tutors available until 5.30 at 636-4357. You want to say goodbye to anybody real quick? Bye-bye. There you go. Nicely done. And this is the last, last live program until we come back in January. So we'll see you back in 2016. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do the Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Southern California Edison, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and Bakersfield City School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.